Hello and welcome to the afternoon session of Pajika M Lab and Autodesk CAD Presents, our Tinker Together um, webinar series. So you will see the actual materials you need in order for our afternoon session. Disregard if you see age under 13 on the materials list. It's the same materials list for our morning session, our afternoon session. So as you all may know, we start a couple of minutes after the top of the hour. So go ahead and grab those materials and we're about to get started 10 minutes after the hour. Once you have your materials in order to join us, don't forget to raise your hand. That lets me know that you're actually able to get started building. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask us in the Q&A section. So that way we can help you get started. It looks like we just need to give a couple of more folks like a minute or two in order to get started. So go ahead and grab your materials. If you need help finding alternative materials, go ahead and send me a Q&A so that way I can help you. Remember, we're tinkering together, folks. And as some of you have already done, raise your hand so I know you're ready to get started. Hello, hello, can everyone hear me? It's okay. Perfect. So welcome to MLab or the MLab Autodesk Tinkercad webinar for us to tinker together. I'm your host, Nisha McCray. I hope you have all your materials ready to get started because what we're going to do today is we're going to build a catapult. Now, a catapult project usually is a very complicated project because you have a lot of things, but I'm going to show you how to do one with items available in your home and also using Tinkercad. Now, for those of you who may not know what Tinkercad is, Tinkercad is a computer-aided design software that allows for you to bring your ideas to life. So, 
we're going to jump start going into the Tinkercad environment. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead to Tinkercad.com or make sure you've created an account at Tinkercad.com because that's going to be the first step in our actual design. And make sure I see a couple of you still haven't raised your hand. Make sure you raise your hand so I know when to get started and if we can move forward with the actual project. Doo -doo -doo. Well, looky there. Okay. So if you already have a Tinkercad.com account, you should already be at your dashboard. If you don't, no worries. I'm going to actually show you the website and you can take your time to get started as we just go over a couple of items. So first thing is this project is going to be in two parts. The first part is we're going to create our first CAD model that's going to serve as a blueprint for our actual catapult. The second thing we're going to do is bring that actual project to life. And the way we're going to do that is with the materials you saw earlier. So you should at least have cardboard, a rubber band or tape or both, depending on how you want your design to come out, making sure you have a ruler, you have a workspace that you can use scissors. I'm going to use scissors and an X-Acto knife in order to make my project be as close to perfect as possible. One of the things that's not on the list, but if you have on hand, perfect. If not, don't worry. It's if you happen to have a plastic spoon. We've been eating a lot of takeout here, so I have a plastic spoon here. You can also use a bottle cap as long as you have enough tape or a rubber band or a hot glue gun in order to actually have the bottle cap assembled to your catapult. If you celebrated Easter and you have some Easter eggs lying around. You can also take half an Easter egg to serve as the holder for what you're gonna be actually catapulting across the room. So hopefully you have all those materials. I like to be a very engaging instructor, so make sure you raise your hand so I can actually see that you're ready to get started. And then it's time for us to build, make, learn. If you haven't already, Q&A part, so yeah, since I see a lot of new faces here, the Q&A section is where you can ask me a question. I'll pause what I'm doing if you're asking a question I feel is appropriate to answer at the time, or I wait to the end of the step in order to answer the question. This allows for you to tinker together with me. I know that during this time, it's kind of hard to build together because we're doing this over distance, but I want to make sure that I'm here to help you because I don't want to leave you behind as we're building. So if you ever have a question at any time, feel free to ask me in the Q&A part and we can get started. Now, usually when I do stuff like this, I like to be ultra prepared. However, today we got to start off with a plan. The way we start off with the plan is using Tinkercad. So I want those last bits of hand raised. I want to make sure we have 75% of folks are ready before we get started. And then we're going to dive into Tinkercad. For those who are waiting, you may notice there's a green bar at the top of your Tinkercad dashboard. I'll show you what that looks like. That green bar at the top of your Tinkercad dashboard is actually the new Tinkercad distance learning competition. So let me go ahead. Well, I won't say competition. I'll say contest. That sounds way nicer than what I actually was thinking. But let me go ahead and show that up here while we're waiting on a couple of folks to raise their hand. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you're in the Tinkercad environment. So if you go in, you'll actually see that there's a green bar at the very top of your Tinkercad environment. So if we look up here, you'll see there's a green bar. That green bar actually is the contest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the learn more hyperlink and that's going to bring us to this page. So this page is pretty much all the details you need in order to participate in the Tinkercad Distance Learning Contest in collaboration with Instructables. So if we scroll down, we notice that you could be eligible to win up to a $500 gift card via Amazon. Now, someone had a really good, important question earlier this morning in regards to can you enter if you live outside the continental United States? And yes, you can. The contest is open internationally since they're actually sending digital prizes. So if you would like to submit to the contest, there are, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, there's five categories you can actually submit in. The first one is make it move, which is demonstrating with your Tinkercad model. I'm gonna give you a quick run through of Tinkercad today, showcasing with the Tinkercad model, how you design something with functioning moving parts. This actual project could be something you submit. I will highly recommend 
after you make our first draft of this project, that you remix this project and make it your own. Because you want to make sure that you make this project stand on its own two feet. So that's going to be my suggestion on that one. The second category you can enter is the connectors category. That's creating anything that could connects together. So it could be hooks, it could be brackets and a robot, it could be an L joint, it could be whatever you want it to be. This is probably the hardest category if you're just starting off in Tinkercad, but don't let that scare you. We're going to be posting many DIY and tutorials on many connector projects that you can use and remix in order to submit to this part of the contest. The third category is silly solutions. It's showing an example of how you've identified a problem and you've seen something that's not working, and you use Tinkercad or 3D design to create a fix or a solution for it. So for example, this is an example I gave earlier today. I actually was thinking about creating a toilet paper carrier. So anytime a particular somebody in my house asks for toilet paper, I actually put some bottle caps on it and use old toilet paper rolls. And you could put the toilet paper on the top and the person just uses a piece of string in order to pull it towards them in cases of emergency. So that's a silly solution that actually fixes a problem that you can actually encounter as we're all staying at home. The fourth category is the mashup category. So if you were with us earlier, you did the Smithsonian mashup. So in our other webinars, you could check out on our YouTube channel, we mashed up Smithsonian models with some basic shapes, some things from the OMSI parts collection. If this is your first time joining us, this sounds like a lot of blog, just go ahead to our YouTube channel and you can actually see one of the actual past webinars we did, which were mashups. A mashup is just taking two or three of your favorite things or a couple of things from the gallery that we're gonna see today and making something new by combining them together. I think it's one of the funner categories you can submit. And the last, the fifth category is the scene category. This is basically designing a physical space such as a park or a landmark or heck, even your own room using Tinkercad in order to have all the models. Now you may be thinking if this is your first time using Tinkercad, are there furniture and things in Tinkercad that I can utilize in order to create a physical space blueprint or CAD model? There is. There's a couple of collections you can use in order to actually submit in the scene category. So those are all five categories you can submit in order to participate in the distance learning with Tinkercad contest. If you check out our past webinars that are on our YouTube channel, you will notice we've done at least three, if not four after today, category submissions that you can remix and submit in order to compete in this contest. Remember, the grand prizes are a $500 gift card and the contest doesn't close until June 1st. So you literally have a month and a half to come up with something, type it up and submit in order to showcase how you tinker together with us. So with that out of the way, you should go ahead and see your Tinkercad dashboard. I'm gonna put my little spotlight on. Spotlight and go ahead and create new design. When you create a new design, you should see, oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I wanted you to see. You didn't need to see that yet. You should see a blank work plane. So now that you see your work plane, we're gonna get started actually creating a Tinkercad model of our design of a catapult. In order to do this, we need to get started with some parts, right? So if we go over to our right-hand side, you'll see there's some basic shapes. In the basic shapes toolbar, you'll notice there are several collections like text and numbers, characters, the OMSI hangout space, which just has a bunch of furniture that was used in order to create the OMSI hangout space in Portland, Oregon. You can also go down and check out some other categories, such as the Smithsonian printable collection. You can see a command module, a woolly mammoth, a triceratops, an orchard, a boot from somewhere. I wanna say a boot from some movie. Also a couple of chairs and things of that nature that you can find on the right hand toolbar. What I want us to actually look at today is something that's brand new. It's called the Making at Home Collection. So if we click the Making at Home Collection, what you'll see is a bunch of items that we can actually find in our homes. So a couple of items such as a popsicle stick, a tissue roll, pencil, these are all items you can find at your home and bring it to the Tinkercad environment and make a looks like, works like prototype or model of what you wanna actually build in real life. And that's kind of what we're gonna to do today. So as we scroll down, we see chopsticks, we see a metal can, we see like a yogurt cup, we see a quart of milk, and we see a beverage cap. So we see all these various items that we could possibly use in order to create our creation. The first thing we're going to use is a popsicle stick 
from this actual making at home collection. So what I want you to do is click the popsicle stick and bring it over to your work plane. Now, when we click over the popsicle stick, what we notice if we zoom in, which we can do by clicking the left hand side and this fitted square, we'll notice the actual dimensions of our popsicle stick is 10 something and 114 something. So let me click so you guys can see, but we don't know what units those are. So let's go ahead with our mouse and click over to the lower right hand side and we see that our grid is in millimeters. Now, depending on where you are, you may be more comfortable with millimeters or inches. I'm more comfortable with inches because I'm based in the United States. So I'm gonna change my actual work grid. And the way I did that, because I saw someone say, wait, what did you do? How I do that is I click on the lower right hand side, I click edit grid. And when I click that, I see that my units are in millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is click the drop down menu and bring it down so I'm in inches. Once I'm in inches, I'm going to go ahead and change the width and the length of my work plane. The way I do that is click here, and I feel like this needs to be 12 inches, because 12 inches is about from here to here, which is about decent if I'm looking at some popsicle sticks. So I'm going to make this 12. I'm going to make this 12. So now I've made my work plane a little bit bigger so I have more space to play around with because it mirrors my actual work plane in real life. So what I have here is one popsicle stick. I'm gonna click the lower corner and you see the actual dimensions of a popsicle stick. I'm a person who needs to write things down. So what I'm gonna do on my post-it note or my piece of paper is I'm gonna write down the dimensions of my popsicle stick. So I'm gonna write down that it's, whoop, I keep clicking off, is 4.488 inches across, and one more time, it's 0 0.394 inches, or approximately 0 0.4 inches down. So it's about four pi, four pi, see, you already see I'm thinking about lunch, 4.5 inches across, and about 0 0.4 inches wide. However, this is also 3D design. So we've gotten two of our dimensions, which is width and length. So let's think about the thickness, which is our third dimension. And as we can see here, the thickness is zero, whoop, 0 0.083 inches or approximately 0 0.01 inches. So now we have all the dimensions of our popsicle stick. If you happen to have popsicle sticks at home, you can always double check and see if the actual model is correct. But we're not going to do that for right now. So what we're going to do is create a draft model of what we think our catapult is going to be. So I'm going to show you one design of a catapult I have in mind, and then you can go ahead and remix it the way you want to remix it for your design of a catapult. So first things first is I have our basic popsicle stick. Now, you may have noticed that we actually don't have popsicle sticks on the materials list. If you happen to have popsicle sticks, go ahead and grab those. Those will be a perfect time. But based on our experience, we realized that a lot of students don't have popsicle sticks at home. So we've actually adapted this project to incorporate cardboard, which was a more available material. If you happen to have popsicle sticks, do your thing. Go ahead and grab those, and you can actually build an exact replica of your model. But enough from me. Let's go back into Tinkercad. So if we go back into our Tinkercad model with our popsicle stick, the first thing I'm gonna do in order to build my catapult model is I'm gonna duplicate this popsicle stick. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go over, whoop, I forgot my spotlight. So I'm gonna go over with my spotlight tool and go over to my upper left-hand side and I'm gonna go to copy, which is control C on your keyboard. And then I'm gonna go over to paste or control V and paste. So now I've just made a duplicate of my popsicle stick. And as you can see here with me moving the mouse around, you can actually see I did make a duplicate. Now, this is when writing down the measurements of your popsicle stick comes into play. So if you remember on your piece of paper, and don't mind me, I'm just gonna actually try to be fancy. You remember that your length was about 4.5 inches, your width was about 0 0.4 inches, and the thickness of your material was about 0 0.083 inches, correct? So what we're gonna do 
is we're gonna take our spotlight and go to the black triangle above the actual popsicle stick. So that bad boy right there. And we're gonna raise our second popsicle stick, the exact height of our first popsicle stick. The reason we wanna do this is we wanna actually showcase that this is sitting on top of our actual popsicle stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter 0, 0.083 inches as the exact height, right? Now, how can I tell that this popsicle stick is gonna sit right on top of this popsicle stick? Don't fear, Miss Nisha's here. If you go over to the left-hand side to that camera view, we're gonna click that camera view to do a front view, and you'll notice you can see this is slightly raised, the one we just made a copy of, and we can see a faint shadow of the previous one. So what we're gonna do is tilt back, so going back to our camera angle, selecting the shift key, and we're gonna use one of my favorite tools in Tinkercad. We're gonna use the align tool over on the right hand side. So here you see the align tool and we're gonna align whoop, down the middle. One of the nice things about the align tool is you see an orange outline of what you're about to do before you commit to your decision. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So over here, I want to center my popsicle sticks so they're aligned this way. But when I wave my mouse around, you see that the actual orange outlines show you a preview of your future. I love this because it allows for me to know if I want to commit to something before I make the mistake. So here, I'm going to press the align tool and boom, we see that just writing down that measurement allowed for us to stack our popsicle sticks perfectly. So now that we have two popsicle sticks sitting together, what are we going to do for the third one? So the way I've designed my catapult is I'm actually gonna have a popsicle stick sticking out vertically or perpendicular to these two. So what I'm gonna do is go back over to my making at home tools and then I'm gonna bring over another popsicle stick. Now this one I'm gonna leave over here. And in order to get my popsicle stick to be perpendicular to these two, I'm gonna have to rotate. So I want my popsicle stick to go from this here to having the new one be perpendicular to that one right there. So I'm gonna show you how to use the rotate tool in Tinkercad. So here we have about three popsicles in our work plane. I need to rotate this one. So what I'm gonna do is put a spotlight on my mouse. And here you'll see this little double arrow. Go over to your left-hand side and click the fitted view. And we can see that double arrow a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is click that double arrow. I'm going to move back and I'm going to rotate my actual double arrows 90 degrees. That allows for this to become perpendicular to the ones I had before. Now, you may notice a problem now that you've rotated. If we go back to our left-hand side and change our camera view, we notice that this popsicle stick is sticking straight through one of our other popsicle sticks like this, this can't happen. So we're gonna need to actually raise up this popsicle stick above the other ones. Now this is where we're gonna need some calculator magic, right? So we know the height of the first one is 0 0.083 and we know the height of this is 0 0.083. So we're gonna have to add 0 0.083 plus 0 0.083 in order to know how high we need to raise this. So I'm gonna create a new tab one of the awesome things about Google Chrome, if you haven't already discovered, is we can just do some math directly in the browser window. So 0 0.083 equals 0 0.166. So we can go ahead to Tinkercad and we know to raise this 0 0.166. So you see that little bad boy right there? That's where we're gonna actually put in 0 0.166. And we see that our new popsicle is sitting firmly these two. So now we're gonna change our view on the left-hand side to see a better perspective. And what do you know? Now, before we see get too happy and start moving around our popsicle, I want my popsicle that's laying right here on top of these two to be laid perpendicular. So the way I'm gonna have to do that is I'm gonna probably have to make sure those bottom two popsicle sticks don't move and making sure the new one that's on top is aligned dead center. So the way we can do that in Tinkercad is using the group tool to make those two popsicle sticks stay together and then making sure that anytime I move this popsicle stick, it doesn't interfere with the popsicle sticks down here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Tinkercad. 
So here you'll notice that there's another tool that we haven't been able to access because we've only been accessing singular objects. Let me go ahead and put the spotlight. Thank you to whoever mentioned that. So we can't use this icon, but we can tell that this is the group icon. Now, since we only have one item selected, which we can tell with this faint blue outline, that means that we need to select multiple objects in order to use the group tool. I mean, if it's only one person, is that really a group? No, that ain't. So what I'm gonna do is use my mouse and click and drag over the two popsicle sticks below. Once I do that, I can find two ways to make sure I selected what I want. You'll find this faint blue outline, as I mentioned earlier. In addition, if you look at your shape toolbar on the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice it says shapes, and then it'll give you a number. That number is how many shapes you've selected. So once I see two, and I know I have two popsicles that I wanted to select, and I see that faint blue outline, I know I've selected the right items. So now, because I've selected more than one item, I see the group icon has shown up on the right-hand side of my Tinkercad toolbar. So now I can press Control G on my keyboard or use my mouse as I'm gonna to do to group those two items together. And as you can see when they're grouped, they make a ta-da, perfect little bunch. So now I can use the keys on my keyboard to move it together and they act as one. But I said I wanted to do this because I wanted to make sure this popsicle stick was aligned with these popsicle sticks. So naturally, I'm going to press the shift key in order to select multiple objects from my keyboard. And I'm also going to click this one that's perpendicular to the ones I just grouped. Now I'm going to go back to my favorite tool, the align tool, or L on your keyboard, click it, and I want to make sure these are aligned down the center. As I zoom in on my future, I realized I was off slightly by eyeballing it, but the align tools got me, so I'm good here. And that's all I needed. So once I click off, I'm just gonna click one actual object I wanna do a little bit more stuff on. But I'm gonna do a front view on the left-hand side, and I see I have this popsicle and I have this. Now when I rotate it, this is kind of sticking up in the air, right? We're not going to bother with it right now, but when we actually finish up our model, we're going to tweak this a little bit to make it more realistic. So the next thing we're going to do for our actual model whoop, is I'm going to select this, if it lets me. Did I accidentally group? Nope, I did not. It's just being weird. One sec, sometimes the Tinkercast software decides to be weird. So one trick I do is I actually just pull another object onto the work plane just to select in order for this to act right. Because sometimes it wants to act weird. So the two popsicle sticks we made earlier in group, I want to create a duplicate. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my upper left hand corner and I'm going to go to duplicate and repeat. Now this is a new tool we haven't used today. The duplicate and repeat tool is also, I'm going to call it part of my top three tools in Tinkercad. It basically allows for you to use the copy and paste feature that we highlighted earlier, but there's a special trick with it. When you use the duplicate and repeat tool, whatever you actually did previously in order to showcase like um, a certain way you moved the duplicate or a certain way you moved the copy, it actually remembers that and will repeat it as many times as you press that button. So I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So now we're going to click duplicate and repeat. And so we see we have a duplicate. We're going to go over to our left hand side and we're going to click our black triangle because we want those two popsicles to sit on top of the one we had perpendicular. So go ahead and click the black triangle and you can see that this one here. Oh, no, did something weird. One second. I want it to be these two popsicles as a group. That's what I accidentally ungrouped. That was my fault. See, if you ever think it's just you, it's not just you. Even people who've been doing this like myself for years, we still sometimes have issues. And this is why we do things alive. So here, you're gonna see me do the front and I'm gonna go back to my duplicate and repeat tool. And I see that outline and I'm gonna raise this up. Now, if I wanna be precise, I now have to account for one, two, three popsicles. So going back over to my calculator, I'm gonna add 0 0.083. Oh, wait, that was equal sign. 0.083, lordy. See, this is when you're trying to multitask too much. 
and that's 0 0.249 or approximately 0 0.25. So when I go back to my actual model, I'm going to raise this that it's 0 0.25. And what do you know? I actually had it dead on. <laughs> Skills. So now that I have that, I'm going to tilt this. And without clicking off, I want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to go back and click the duplicate and repeat tool. And you'll notice that it went up the same height as our duplicate the first time. So what we did is we press duplicate and repeat instead of copy and paste. And that basically did all the same moves we did with the first duplicate out of here. Now, the only problem is I didn't want to have this gap. So I'm just going to go ahead and decrease this. So it's 0 0.166. I'm going to subtract 0 0.166. Ah! No, it's not letting me do it. I got to do the old fashioned way. That's one, two, three, four, five. So instead of keep adding this, I can actually just do multiplication because multiplication is just how many times I'm doing this here. So here, using the asterisk, doing five, and that's 0 0.415. So I'm going to move this up to 0 0.415 off the work plane. So 0 0.415. Booyaka. So now that I have this, let's look at it by changing our camera angle. We have half of our actual catapult done. So go ahead and let me know by raising your hand if you're actually at this stage. So if you had your hand raised previously, go ahead and bring it down and raise it one more time and let me know if you're at this stage. If you see my eyes down here, I'm actually answering some of you all's questions on how to actually do this. So put your hand down if you had your hand up before and raise your hand if you're at this part. If you're at this part, no worries. We're just waiting to make sure that we have everybody with us. Okay, let's give everybody a minute. I'm just gonna stay here for a second to make sure everyone's hunky-dory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone's like, I'm getting there. Just give me a couple minutes. I'm gonna answer a couple of questions right here. You're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there, guys. Okay, one minute. We're almost there, we only have one more thing to do. And just raise your hand when you're at this stage. Perfect. Okay, so I got about 75% of you all are at this stage. So what I'm gonna do is the final moment. It's the final countdown. We're actually gonna create a duplicate of this popsicle stick here. So what I'm gonna do on my left hand side is do a little corner and I'm gonna go ahead and do copy and paste in order to create my duplicate. Now, I'm gonna move this I'm gonna align it a little bit later, and I'm gonna to go to that little black triangle and I'm gonna raise it up. Now, I want this to sit right on top of here, so that's when we go back to our math. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven times 0 0.03. See, who knew you were gonna get a math lesson and all this all on a Friday? So that's 0 0.581 inches. It needs to be off our work plane. So as we go back here, I'm raising this. I'm going to click here and type in 0 0.581 as our actual height. And as you can see here, when we zoom in, that's fitting snugly right there. So now we have this one. It's time for us to start doing some angle work, right? So here we have our actual popsicle sticks. Two of these are just floating, right? That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And let's go ahead and fix this one right here. So this one, when it's actually sitting in the catapult, it's going to look a little different. When we actually are using our catapult launcher, we don't want the popsicle stick sticking out like this in between layers, right? But we're creating a CAD model. And because we're creating a CAD model, sometimes it's a little harder to, you know, make it look like what it would in reality, because in reality, all objects have some kind of tenacity where they're able to bend, etc. 
In Tinkercad, all of our objects are rigid. So we're not able to do a lot of the things we would normally do with them because they're that rigid. So we have to use a little bit of our imagination and actually go in there physically and make it look as close as possible to what we want. So for example, I'm gonna show you an image of what we're actually working towards so you can get more of an idea what we're actually going for. So this I'm gonna actually include on the actual chat room so you can actually follow along. Sorry, I use the word actually a lot, so no worries. So if we go here, we'll actually see, oh Lord, we will see this right here. Let me know if you can see. So we already did the base. We're about to do this top here. And we're about to finish up the catapult. Now, this is what we're doing. Ah, this is what we want our final form of our CAD model to look like. We already have made all these multiple stacks of popsicle sticks. We're gonna figure out how to simulate this in Tinkercad. We've already made this and we already made this. We just need to have it tilted at an angle. And this is gonna be our launcher that we're also gonna CAD up here in the Tinkercad environment. So here we already have this and we have this. We have this, but it looks more like this than this. So that means we're gonna have to rotate this in order to look more like this image here. Oh, thank you. Someone said I didn't have the spotlight so they can't see where my mouse is. We already have our stack of popsicle sticks here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. They have 10. I just decided to do a few less because I didn't need it that high. We already have this popsicle stick and we already have this popsicle stick as well. The only thing we're missing is that our popsicle sticks look more like this one than this very dramatic edge. So what we're gonna actually do is rotate our popsicle stick to have that edge right here. Then lastly, we're gonna create our little cap. That's gonna be our launcher and simulate rubber bands, which is gonna be hard because remember soft shapes, hard shapes in order to create our CAD model of what we're gonna build with our building materials a little bit later. So now that we have more of the visual of what we're building, let's go to Tinkercad and make those popsicle sticks actually look like the way we want them to look. So hopping to Tinkercad, we're gonna have to rotate our top popsicle stick. So here, if we select our top popsicle stick, you'll notice that those double arrows show back up, right? So we're gonna have to rotate the top part in order to have it match that image. Now this is where you have to change your camera angle to what's comfortable for you. But all I need you to see is that double arrow right there. Once you see that double arrow, we're gonna play around with what degrees do we need to rotate this. So that seems pretty dramatic, but it seems it seems doable, but when we rotate it that much, we notice that this is sitting way off the actual plane. And if we look over here, this is the sitting off the plane that much. So what are we doing wrong? Let's go ahead to our Tinkercad model and play around with it a little bit more. So I'm gonna play around with this black triangle and I'm gonna raise it up. When I raise it up, let me zoom out a bit for y'all, and I move it more towards the front, we'll notice that we probably don't have to do as dramatic of a height difference. Because here, if we look towards the front, we actually can see that this middle part is actually what's touching the middle stacks of our popsicle sticks. So we go back to our Tinkercad model, we actually probably wanna move this back. So let's move it back and let's decrease the amount of rotation there. Move it back, move it back. And it still seems like we still have a huge gap. Do you think it may have something to do with us not having enough popsicle sticks? Because here they have 10 popsicle sticks. And in our design, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Maybe we duplicate these one, two, three, four popsicle sticks to provide us a little bit more, I don't know, leverage for our catapult? Let's find out. So what we're gonna do is just select all, we're gonna select those four popsicle sticks to double check that what we selected is those four popsicle sticks. You have to remember, two of our popsicle sticks are grouped as one object. So we should only see two shapes. If we look over to the right-hand side, we have a verification there's two shapes, but because we wanna make sure all two groups of two are highlighted, we can look over here 
and we see that faint blue outline. So now we know that those four popsicle sticks are what we selected. So now we're gonna group them temporarily. Oop, I don't like that. I'm gonna actually ungroup. You don't have to actually group it. I did not like the way the software responded there. So I'm gonna select those four popsicle sticks again. And what I'm gonna do is go to copy and paste. Once I've copied and pasted, I'm gonna raise this up I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, fitted view. And it looks like I just need to make sure it's aligned with all these other popsicle sticks. So I'm gonna just change my camera angle, select these popsicle sticks, change my camera angle again, select these, select these. I just wanna make sure it's aligned. And go over to my right-hand side to the Align tool and align I did not press it. Go to my align tool and the line right down the center as such. Now that it's aligned, I'm gonna change my camera angle and you see that little bit of a gap? It's cause we didn't do our map on this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven that we need to take account for. So go back to our trusty calculator and what do we have seven as? 0.581, correct? 0.581, see, that's that memory. So I know that this here's distance needs to be 0.581. Hold on, let me group all of those items. Black triangle, it needs to be 0.581 off the work plane. Once we click off or click one of the objects, if you're having issues, we can see here that all of our popsicle sticks are stacked together and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if we go over to our actual picture here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Seems like all of our troubles should go away. Let's go ahead, look at our model. Let's zoom out again. And let's see if we can actually have this rotate a little bit. Now, if you wanna rotate your actual popsicle stick here, not by a larger number of degrees, but smaller degrees, I'm gonna show you a trick. You see this double arrow? Click it and move your mouse up. When you move your mouse up, did you see that? It goes from small, it goes from the small degree circle to the larger degree circle. I'm gonna show you again. Small degree circle, move it up, bigger degree circle. And that allows for you to move it ever so slightly as needed. And then I'm gonna raise it back down so it's touching a little bit more. And this here, we're gonna eyeball as such. So here we can tell we can move it a certain number of degrees in order to make it look like this bad boy here. But hold up, didn't I just say that this here meets it at the halfway point? If we look here, it's not at the halfway point, right? And matter of fact, Ugh. If I look here, this and this should be in the same direction. While in our case, that's not so much. But don't fear, there's a way we can remedy this. If I click my popsicle stick here, I could just have it do this. Oh, quick magic, right? So that way, I can actually just move it like that, change my left camera angle a little bit, change that actual degree, tilt my angle again, and you see this, this is all just working with the software. Tilt it again, a little bit more. Let's look at our camera angle. Are we above it? Not so much. Play with moving that one more time. And what you're seeing me do is this is when Tinkercad helps you visualize what you need in order for something to happen. So you see the more I move the popsicle stick through that gap there, the more I'm able to play around with this here. And you see me just playing around with it until I come to a point 
that I feel is the most realistic. And we're gonna play around with it one more time. A little bit more up. See my angle? Okay. Now, now I'm looking at this. Let me look at it from an upper corner. And now let me look at the marshmallow launcher here. So now this looks pretty, pretty close. I have my stick here between the first and the second layers. I have my catapult here. So all I need to do is just replicate the rubber bands and the actual launch console. So what I'm gonna do is go here, and if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand as we're going through this. I am showing you the painstaking step by step, but if you have any questions, don't fear. Now, some of you may have some leftover Easter eggs as this particular person had right here, but what I'm gonna use in mine is I'm gonna use a bottle cap. So I'm gonna use this beverage cap here and I'm gonna bring it over to the work plane. And what I'm gonna do is flip this. So I'm gonna use that double arrow and boom, flip it. I wanna flip it 180 degrees. If your hand isn't precise enough to do 180, don't worry, you can just enter it. And now I'm gonna do a side view. So I want this bottle cap to be right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, raise up, and I'm gonna move this over here. Oop, oop, press the wrong, press the wrong thing. I'm gonna click and move this over here. Change my angle to make sure I'm close and then use my keys in order to make sure I'm closer. I can also cheat by selecting my popsicle sticks here, going to my align tool, and making sure it's aligned down the center. Perfect. Now I'm gonna to click to my different camera angle, and now I know that I need to actually do this here. I'm gonna show you a trick if you're not the most confident about being able to rotate this bottle cap. Let me go ahead and click off. Click this bottle cap, delete it. I'm actually gonna show you a different way to do it. So on your keyboard, you'll notice that you have a W key. Go ahead and press the W key and you'll see this little square show up. When you have the square, I want you to put the square right on your popsicle stick. And if we change our camera angle, you'll see that you now have a work plane at this angle. Now you can go ahead and click your beverage cap and bring it over. When you bring it over, you'll notice it's already at the angle you want. And I'm gonna prove it to you. See, it's already right on that surface. So now all you have to do is just rotate, rotate 180 degrees, go ahead and type it in, and check your camera angle to make sure she looking hunky-dory. And there you have it, you have your bottle cap already on there. Once you feel happy, press your W key on your keyboard again and press it to where you see this faint outline here of your original work plane. Press it and there you have it. You have your bottle cap already on your popsicle stick. So now we're looking at it and I see I need us to align this again. So I'm gonna go ahead, press the align key once I select both objects. Oh, but I forgot to align to the bottom popsicle stick. Yikes. Actually, I'm going to align all of this. I'm going to just select all. I'm going to go to my align tool. I'm going to go here. And I want everything to be aligned down the middle. Perfect. So now that I have this, we have our capsule. Oh, let me click off. So doing a quick look, we have our capsule. We have our popsicle stick to launch, we have our base, and we have these other popsicle sticks. So this is looking pretty much like this marshmallow launcher here. The only thing missing is some marshmallows and the rubber bands. Now, remember I said rubber bands are a soft material? That is really hard to replicate in Tinkercad, but we can make it look like it's a rubber band in order to make this CAD model a looks like prototype. So I'm gonna show you a quick trick. We're gonna go over to our right toolbar and we're gonna go over to basic shapes. So basic shapes, we could either do a squiggly. So squiggly tool is actually one of the few tools on here that allows you some creativity as you see here. And what I can do is actually freehand a rubber band. So I'm just gonna draw some squigglies to make it look like a rubber band, as you see here. 
and you see that whatever you draw here becomes an actual 3D shape over here. So now that I have that, I'm gonna to try to see if I can do three rubber band looks to look like. And look at my poor mouse skills, it's totally fine, but I'm trying to make it look more like a rubber band. And done. So now what I'm gonna do is decrease the height, zoom out a bit, and I'm gonna bring this over. Now, once I just showed you how to use this tool, remember that W key, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna actually shortcut this using the W key because this allows for me to actually put it on the surface without having to do double duty. So I'm gonna go here and I wanna do rubber bands here and here. So I'm gonna press the W key on my keyboard. Whoop, did not press the right key. And I'm gonna click the actual outside of the popsicle sticks here. And you can double check by changing your camera view. I'm gonna bring the squiggly tool that I've done my test run. I'm gonna click the scribble tool, click here, and it's showing me where it's gonna show up, right? So now I can click down. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. And you should see the first line pop up, right? So now I'm gonna do the second line. And then I'm gonna do the third line. Perfect. So now I'm gonna click done. And now I'm gonna decrease the height here. So I'm gonna click that little black square at the top, decrease the height. Now, if you find that you decreasing the height, you're not getting exactly what you want by moving, go down to the upper lower right hand side to your snap grid. Each of those squares in Tinkercad represents a measurement. You can see the measurement by looking down and seeing it's one eighth of an inch. If you want to make it smaller, like I do here, go over and you can just click it. So instead of doing one eighth of an inch, every time I move it is one sixteenth. And you see here how that little difference makes. I may have to even go down to 1 32nd of an inch. So as you see here, there we go, 1 32nd of an inch. Now I'm gonna do the bottom here and I want this to go down and touch the bottom. So I want this to look as realistic as possible to rubber bands. Now, this is gonna be limited. There's only so much we can do, but we could also make sure that we don't have to do this twice and that this set of rubber bands actually touches the top and the bottom. So you see, you're gonna see what I mean in a minute. So when I have this lightly touch the top, I'm gonna to have this go through, and I want this to go entirely through the popsicles. So it looks like it's a rubber band going through both sides. So that means I may have to change the depth. And the depth is that little white square here. So I'm gonna do this here. That's a little too much because I'm gonna do my black triangle to go in and out of my work plane, which is this here. Now I'm gonna look at the top view and you can see the little strings of the rubber band. And I see here the same thing. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of my actual work plane view this way by clicking my W key and clicking down here. And now I can look at it in a regular environment. And that kind of looks like rubber bands. So now I'm gonna go ahead, duplicate, and I'm gonna just go ahead and muscle that bad boy down my popsicle stick. If I rotate here, and move it down. That's our first set of rubber bands. And all we did is use the scribble tool. Now, if we go back to this actual image, we have one, two rubber bands. The last rubber band is gonna have to be here and here, right? There's also a rubber band here, and that's because it helps stop this from moving backwards. So we have one, two, and three more rubber bands to add, and then we can bring this CAD model to life. So let's go over here. And we have to add some rubber bands right here. Now this one's gonna be a little tricky because as you can tell, this is at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is do a side view and I'm gonna start my rubber bands here. So go ahead and click this bad boy. I'm gonna to go to my fitted view on my left-hand side and I'm gonna press my W key and have this situated right here on that popsicle stick. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go back to my scribble tool ha, 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 and put it right where I want those rubber bands to be actually putting together 
this part and this part of my actual popsicle sticks. So let's see how I'm going to do that part. So going back into the Tinkercad environment, I'm going to focus on that little and try to get one, two, and three. And so now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and click done. And now I can actually see playing around with my camera angle. Let me go ahead and put a spotlight. Spotlight. Sorry, I don't know why spotlight makes me want to sing a jingle. And we can see here that this is where our actual two popsicle sticks meet. So I'm going to take my actual shape and move it in. I'm going to bring the middle of this out. Oop, that was height. That was height. That was my bad. That was my bad. That was my bad. I press the wrong button. I'm trying to get the thickness. There we go. And then the black triangle to move it in and out of the work plane. So it looks like it's happening to both. And playing around with my camera angles on the left hand side, I'm going to take my arrows and actually have my rubber band sit there. Now, these are too high, so I'm going to lower them ever so slightly, ever so slightly. just so they look like they're on the top and the bottom. Now, one thing we can actually do is we can rotate these rubber bands so that the rubber band actually encompasses the bottom and the top here. So I'm gonna do a slightly more varied scaling using the lower right box in order to manipulate my rubber bands that I made with the scribble tool to look more like I've imagined. Depending on how you did your squigglies, if you are better, if you're better with the mouse than I am, then this probably looks way more realistic. But let's go ahead and see what we got so far. So we have these, they're looking a bit thick, but that's okay. So we have this. So I think we're okay here. So I think that's a good solid attempt. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to go ahead and press the W key again and press my work plane and it's back to normal. So now the only other thing we need to do is, whoop, is figure out how to attach a rubber band here and here. Now the material I'm actually going to use is I'm not going to actually use a rubber band to tie my egg capsule because I'm not using an egg capsule. I'm using a bottle cap or a spoon. So I don't need to actually add this rubber band, but if you're using an egg capsule, go ahead and do so. In fact, if you don't want to use the bottle cap and you want to actually replicate your egg capsule because Easter just happened, you can go ahead to the actual part collection. Oops, sorry. If you go into, I believe it's favorites, am I going insane? No, I think I am going insane. Give me one sec, folks. Have I just gone insane? Is it in characters? Oh, dear God, it's in characters. My bad, that was my apologies. My brain went poof. But if you go to your characters collection, you'll find an egg. And so you can actually bring an egg here. And there's already an egg hole. So what you can do is bring both. I would actually just bring the egg here, your egg hole, raise it up a little bit, click both items, because what we're gonna do is align. Click the align tool, align down the middle here, align down the middle here. And then what you can actually do is invert the hole. So what I'm gonna do, let me click off, click the hole, and then use the actual double arrow to rotate the egg the egg hole 180 degrees. Let me go ahead and make sure that's 180. Enter. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's a little bit more in there. Look at my side view here. I'm gonna select both objects. And this is how I'm gonna create a hole that could be like an Easter egg hole. So I'm gonna click group. And as you can see here, the top part disappeared. And we have a little crevice to actually make our egg whole. So if you want to actually showcase you using an empty Easter egg, by all means, go ahead and do it. You can even change the color here to make it more like this. But I like my bottle cap. So unless you show me by a raise a hand, go ahead and raise your hand if you actually want me to change the bottle cap to this actual egg part. Go ahead and do so. 
Okay, okay, okay. I see we're still in the spirit of Easter. I get it. I get it. If we're going to do so, I'm going to change the bottle cap. You know what? Why not? You know what? I'll make a duplicate when I finish this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll make an egg one, okay? I'll make an egg one. So here, the only thing I need to do left is actually add some rubber bands right here in order to complete my actual model. So here, I'm going to click the popsicle stick. I'm going to press the W key and press on the popsicle stick. Now I'm going to go back to my basic shapes in my right hand side and click the scribble tool. Doing this would allow for me to actually scribble the last rubber bands right here. So now that I know this is my design space, I'm going to try my first stroke here, doing some horizontal rubber bands. And then I'm going to do one more right here because this one's going to be more tightly wound. Ooh, I do not like that one. Hold on, let me use my eraser. I don't like that line. We go, ooh, no, I wanna erase all of it. All of it. All of it didn't work for me. And then just click those little scraps. I wanna get away from me, it's okay. I don't want you becoming 3D shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and go one more time, trying to keep it steady. You wouldn't think I had a computer mouse. Here, going across, keeping it steady, and then done. So now I have this. I'm going to go ahead and move it down, move it back so it's not going into the actual. And don't worry about not playing with your camera angles. Like this is this is one of those things you want to play with your camera angles because it may look fine on one side and it looks grotesque on the other. So you see me playing around to see what I can do. Like I can bring this even lower. And I can actually decrease the height. That's another thing I can do. So I see that this is a little too tall. I'm gonna go ahead and make this look more realistic and bring this down. So now that I have my actual rubber bands here, let's take a look at it. She looks pretty good. Press my W key on my keyboard, press onto the outline. And what do you know? We actually made a CAD model of a marshmallow launcher just using our basic shapes as well as the new Tinkercad Make It At Home collection. On top of that, I think it looks pretty close to this one, right? So now that we have our basic CAD model, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my mouse over this entire thing and I'm going to group it. Well, first, I'm gonna group it without the bottle cap because I'm gonna make a duplicate. So group, and now I'm gonna copy, Ooh, gotta give it a second, group, copy, paste. And I just made a duplicate one. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And my duplicate one, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna do Control X on my keyboard, or I can go up here and do the same thing. Oh, sorry, cut. I can do Control C. And then I'm gonna click the W key on my keyboard and put it right here is where I'm gonna have my egg appear. And then do Control V to have it actually appear. This is one of the nice tricks I found out so I don't have to keep like rotating and tilting things. Press my W key one more time, click back to my original work plane. And I'm gonna click my egg, click my actual catapult structure, check my angles that it's touching, that's perfect. And then I'm gonna actually make sure it's aligned because I'm a stickler. So now I'm gonna rotate my camera angle, make sure it's aligned down the middle, and then it feel like it's safe to group. And now we have two objects. I'm gonna make it look pretty. So one sec, ah. I'm gonna group this now that I've made my duplicates. Go ahead and group it. And there we have it. We have two actual marshmallow catapults that we've actually tinkered together and made blueprints for using just the Making at Home collection. So what I'm going to do now is move this towards the center because I want it to be pretty, pretty. I'm going to drag an object over here just so I have something to click off on. I'm going to move this a little bit away. I'm gonna move this one a little bit away. Oop, 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 yes, I, I know I've been I've been missing up more than usual. It's weird. So I'm going ahead and click in this. A different object in order to actually shuffle 
some things around. And there we have it. If we look at our angle, we have our two catapults. So I'm going to get rid of our extra popsicle sticks. And we have two catapults that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and go to send to and I'm going to download a screenshot of our catapults. Now, if you want to be more artsy, you can be. So for example, if I click this, I can move it up to make a more artsy shot. As you can see here, I'm just making it so my actual artsy shot looks a little cuter. I'm going to go ahead and click send to and download here. So once I have that, we're going to be switching stations. So give me a moment because we're actually going to try to do this in real life using some basic materials we have around the house. So if you haven't already done so, forgive what you see. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and grab your cardboard, your rubber bands, as well as your scissors, your tape, your hot glue, and all of those things, because we're going to bring our marshmallow card, oh my god, marshmallow catapult to life using Tinkercad. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing this here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to give you guys about three to four minutes to regather all those materials because I know some of you have already told me in the Q&A part that you're not ready to actually do that. No sweat. Go ahead and grab those materials right now. Do your snapshots because I would love for you all to share that with us. You can find us on social media at Bajika, at M-B-A-D-I-K-A. -A. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Go ahead and share your snapshots so I can actually see how you've brought your little marshmallow launcher to life as you grab your materials if you already haven't done so. And we'll be back here in three to four minutes.
This should be your last. This should be your last minute gathering materials. So go ahead and have those materials gathered. We're about to get started, so make sure you have all the materials you need in order to follow along with us. So everyone should be able to see. So everyone should be able to see my workstation. No worries if you can't see my face. I wanted to focus on the actual build of this part. So no worries. I have my gloves in hand because I'm dealing with a hot glue gun, as you can see here, as well as my scissors, exacto knife, permanent markers, and some things to actually jet out. And of course, because I'm using a hot glue stick, I have glue sticks. Oh, sorry, I'm using a hot glue gun. So I have my glue sticks at the ready as well as some cardboard. So first things first, I'm gonna jump quickly back over to our Tinkercad model. So if you see here in our Tinkercad model, we actually had a design here. If we look at the dimensions of our design when we ungroup, we can actually click certain parts and get some measurements, right? So if we tilt around, we know that the width of our popsicle sticks from earlier, as well as our Tinkercad model, is about 4.48 inches, right? So 4.5 inches is what we guessed. So when we actually switch over to our workstation, the first thing we need to actually get started is we need to measure out some cardboard. So I'm gonna move some stuff off in order to give myself some space, put my ruler, center key, in order to get started, I'm gonna put my hot glue gun in a safe place. So it's not in the way. And first thing, I'm gonna bring over some cardboard. Now, we need to make sure whatever cardboard we're using is about 4.8 inches in width. So, getting our ruler, remember the trick with rulers, you don't start at the actual edge of the ruler, you start where you see the inch marker for your ruler. So for example, I like to start with the upper corner just to make sure everything's hunky-dory. I'm gonna take my permanent marker. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's 4.8 inches. So one, two, three, four, 4.8 inches. So we have sufficient length here on this piece of cardboard to use it. Now, when we go over to our Tinkercad model again, we need to figure out how thick was our stack of actual popsicle sticks. So this is gonna require multiple, and I mean multiple undoings. So So here what I'm gonna, Apologies for that, folks. It seems like I forgot that technology is limited. So I'm gonna continue on grouping because what I want is the width of this stack right here. 
So if I click a random object, I can see here that the width is about 0 0.39. So it's about 4.8 inches. And the width is about, click one more time to make sure I have that, 0 0.39. is my width and my length is 4.8. Now that I have it written down I'm in the Tinkercad environment, the last thing I need to do is figuring out how high was all of this. Because so I need to make sure I have the same thickness. So the thickness here is about 0 0.969 inches, which is about one inch in thickness, right? Is what we're shooting for. We have to keep in mind, we're gonna have those pieces of cardboard underneath in order to sandwich our popsicle stick. So if we exit out of Tinkercad and we go back to our actual workstation, you see I wrote down my measurements here. So what I'm looking for is to get started with my first prototype. It's gonna be 0 0.394 inches long. So taking my ruler and 0 0.394 is about 0 0.4 inches. So about here. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this out. This is my sample of what a popsicle stick should be. And do this here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and this is gonna be my template for my other popsicle sticks that I'm gonna create. So remember when we said we had to create 10 popsicle sticks to form the base, then we have the popsicle stick that's sitting out this way and the one that's actually gonna be our catapult. The reason why I said I prefer to use a plastic straw as my top catapult is that it's gonna be a lot stronger than our cardboard. So if you have that material to substitute, by all means do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my cardboard and cut it out in order to make my template. Got this piece here, now I'm gonna cut this additional piece here. And I have it. Now this part has a little weak spot, but no worry, this is just gonna be our template. So now that we have our template, what we're gonna do is lay our template down onto our piece of cardboard, take our actual marker. If you have a fine point permanent marker, this is a perfect time because these pieces are so small. And just go ahead holding it down, just creating multiple little popsicle sticks. Do, 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 do. Oops, sorry. We had a bump in the camera. Hope no one got nauseous after that. Now you can actually do the templates grouped together like that, or you can do it how I do it, and that's creating a space. So this will be number two. This will be a space. The space doesn't have to be that big, but I'm just giving an example. And then you can go down to number three. The reason why I make a space between my outlines of my templates is because <sighs> I'm not the greatest cutter. So I always wanna make sure that if I mess up, I'm not cutting into my second one, right? So that's why I always allow space between. Now, how big your space is or how generous you are depends on how much material you have. Some of us don't have a lot of cardboard, so I'm gonna say make that space smaller if necessary. Now I'm gonna show you how to use a different tool. This tool, if you've seen our other webinars, is an X-Acto knife. So what I love about the X-Acto knife is that you can actually pop, pop, actually pop out blades and do straight lines. When I'm actually using my scissors, what I struggle with is cutting straight lines. So that's where my X-Acto knife comes into play. So with my X-Acto knife, I'm popping out two blades, using the ruler to keep my fingers safe. I like to keep my fingers and doing a straight line away from my body. Sometimes people are scared of X-Acto knives or some people call them box cutters. I would say don't be afraid of them as long as you use them responsibly. So don't try to rush in, don't cut towards your body, cut away from your body. Make sure you only have two blades out and you're fine. And I think when you do prototyping, which is creating a looks like or works like, like we're doing today. I think they're perfect tools. Like I said before, this is my favorite graduation gift to give people is an X-Acto knife as well as a self-healing mat. Now, if this is your first time seeing a self-healing mat, you could basically take your 
box cutter or your Zacto knife, and you can't damage your actual surface that you're working on. So you see here, going ahead and cutting. And you see, I've already made a little ridge. Now, I can continue going over with the X-Acto knife, but at this point, I think it's safe to say I can go over with my scissors just to unleash it from its burden. There we go. Oop, I forgot to cut this little middle line right here. Let me go ahead and do that. See, this is what happens on lives. You guys asked me to show you realistic building, which includes realistic mistakes. So here, I'm gonna continue doing this until I have at least 12 of these pieces. So sometimes you can cheat a little bit and you can actually cut these pieces in half and make a scaled down version of a prototype. I was thinking about doing that, but I also felt like you guys wouldn't allow me to get away with that. So, uh, <laughs> Decisions, decisions. So I already have four right there. I'm going to go ahead and continue using my template in order to create my remaining ones. But I wonder where you guys are in the United States, because for what I can tell in the Q&A part, a lot of you all are enjoying some nice weather. I mean, here in New England and Boston, I can finally see the sun for consistent days. Now, there's been some times that I've seen the sun, been teased a little bit, and um, as soon as I go outside to enjoy it or eat a snack or my lunch, it's like pouring rain or it gets dark and gloomy and I'm like, ah. Well, probably not at that exasperated of a level, but close enough. So I got six. But everyone over the past couple of days has been like, what are you talking about? It's bad weather. It's been great weather. And I've been like, oh, I must just live in the wrong part of the country which I believe my mother would say that is 100% the correct answer. But you know, <laughs> I love Boston. I actually love working with the students here. We do work in multiple locations in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, but there's something about Boston. I don't know if this, I don't like clam chowder, but maybe it's the smell of clam chowder or something that keeps me here, who knows? So here's nine, we're gonna do 10. And I'm going to do some extras because this is cardboard. I want to make sure <laughs> that if I mess up, that I don't have to go back and cut out some extra ones. You always like to have extras. So don't torture yourself. Go ahead and just make those extras so you don't have to come back. So while you're in the zone and you're in the template making zone, just go ahead and make your extras. So now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead, use my ruler and make my cuts in order to start assembling. So first, you see that exacto? I'm gonna do one more pass, then moving down the line. This can almost become like a soothing activity. I know some people make Zen gardens. I like to wrap a prototype with cardboard. So if you're like me, this could be your Zen moment of rapid prototyping with cardboard. So here, I'm gonna do this line, this bad boy right here. And then last but not least, well, it's not the last one. So here I'm gonna actually do something different. I'm gonna hold it here just to keep it as straight as possible. Ooh, a little too aggressive. This one's a bit of a challenge, but I got you. Okay, do a straight line down. And as you can see, I'm moving my body so it's a little harder for me to actually control the exacto in order to make sure I'm not pointing it towards my actual torso because that's how you get hurt. So continue to move. And then moving this down a little bit more. And then this bad boy right here. Da, 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 it's a bad boy. I don't, I don't know what I'm singing there. Just, just let me have my moment. <laughs> and then cutting and unleashing these last bits right here.
rotating it this way. And now I'm gonna go with my pair of scissors and cut through. So you should thoroughly see them. If you did the scissor method, you're probably way ahead of me, but I just can't do straight lines, so I prefer this method. So my actual prototypes look neater. And as you can see, I'm going straight down, popping them out almost like a Kit Kat. <laughs> give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Okay, I don't know how I just dated myself there, but it's totally fine. Breaking off these last pieces here before we move on to the last batch. You see all these popsicle sticks we've made from scratch using cardboard. See? Just because you don't have this particular material doesn't mean you can't make it. So here, go ahead and expose and get a little bit. And pull your cup. You can tell when I'm closer to the end how aggressive and bold I'm getting with my cutting. Yeah. And I think this is perfect timing because I think my hot glue gun is ready to go. She's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been ready. One of the nice things about cardboard is that it's pretty much the same thickness as if you were using a popsicle stick. So just to keep in mind. So if we look at our CAD model one more time, so let me hop screens quickly. If we look at our CAD model, zoom in, we see we first started off with two popsicle sticks and then we moved up, put the popsicle stick laying vertically, and then we added the remaining eight popsicle sticks and then had one popsicle stick in this direction. So what we're gonna do here is something similar. So I have one, two popsicle sticks. I'm gonna put all my popsicle sticks over here. I have my rubber bands for later here. And I have my cap or my spoon capsule, boing, in order to bring that to life. So I have my first two here. Now you can either use tape or you can actually use a hot glue or a hot glue gun in order to do hot, I said hot glue twice. I don't know why my tongue has been tied with hot glue. But let me go ahead, not make an actual hazard here because something has gotten caught. Perfect. Forgive that little technical interruption. This is a counter after all. I have my hot glue gun, right? So what I'm gonna do is just lay a line down and add this and press it down to make my first two. So you see here, I made my first two popsicle sticks that I'm gonna have aligned. Now, I'm gonna to have to use this one as a fake one. Actually, let me go ahead with my number sequencing 10. Have this one as my fake one. I'm gonna go ahead and move it just like my actual Tinkercad model so that I can move it around a little bit. So here, you see this bad boy right here. So you see me here. Some people said, you wanna see my face while I do this? So I'm gonna to try to do that. So here we have our popsicle stick. And just like we have in our Tinkercad model, if we hop screens, is we can see at a top view or a side angle view that we wanna keep a little bit of the popsicle stick sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and honor that. I typically keep about a quarter of an inch so I'm gonna use my ruler and move it about a quarter of an inch off and do it that way. So now that I have it a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and apply it on my number 12 and move this bad boy about a quarter of an inch, as you can see from the top view, as such. Then I'm gonna go ahead and lay on top of here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This lucky, ah, let me get my number nine. Gotta move quickly. My number nine right here, holding it down. And just like in our CAD model, if you see here, our actual popsicle stick that's sticking vertically is sticking out. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and
sorry. <laughs> my over the top is kind of working. So give me one second to make sure I can switch my camera angles to show you what I'm gonna do next. So raise your hand if you're already at this stage and everyone's like, I'm still adding layers because I don't have my hot glue gun. Okay, I see that, I see that. This is your moment to play, to actually catch up. You guys have a couple minutes while I make sure my camera angles are ready for you all, so no fret. Breathe, just breathe, it's okay. We're in this together, that's why it's called tinkering together, but we're almost done, can you believe? So let me go ahead and make sure that she's good. Sorry about that. Okay, I think you all can see the workstation a little bit. This always happens. I'm trying folks, I'm really trying. There we go. Sorry for that little moment. Hopefully you can see my workstation again. So what I have here is that I have the eight layers and the two layers. I have one, two layers of our popsicle sticks and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight layers of the ones on top. So now what I need to work on is this actual top layer. So what I can do based on our Tinkercad model is I can actually have my layers look like this in which I actually have the catapult working this way. So I can actually have the catapult working this way so that way I have the base one and then I have this one here. Now that will work perfectly and seems to be pretty robust. We can even try it out. So I'm gonna use hot glue just to stabilize. And just like we did in our Tinkercad model, I'm gonna go ahead, machine a little bit here. And I'm just gonna hold it for a second. So you can see right here, I'm just holding this catapult moment. Unlike in Tinkercad, we don't have to manipulate the corners as much in order to get it to hold in place. And now that I have everything, when you start getting my rubber bands, and I'm actually gonna rubber band this part here, because I use hot glue, I don't have to worry about this popsicle stick moving in and out or not be as concerned. So see here, double rubber band. And now I'm gonna rubber band this side here with my rubber band here. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I just lost it. Oh, where did I lose it? No. Oh, someone said they want a closer view. Give me one second. So is that a closer view for you all? Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so hopefully this is also coming out a little clearer as some people were saying. So you have your rubber band hand here, here, and then you have your other rubber rubber band here. Boom. So you have your catapult there, and this is what she looks like right from the side. And if we go back into our Tinker Head model, 
this is what she looked like. So if I tilt her this way, I think she's looking pretty good. So the next thing we needed to do is add the actual battle cap, la la, battle cap to the top and a rubber band right here. Now, if you're going to be using it with a hot glue, you want to add a rubber rubber band right here as well. This will prevent your cardboard from moving back and forth when you apply a little bit of pressure. So I'm going to try to put a little rubber band here. Now, this is completely optional because I added hot glue here, but I'm going to try to make it as realistic as possible. Then, taking another rubber band and doing it here. Now, this one I have to be a little careful about because this is not as rigid as an actual popsicle. So, I don't want to bend the cardboard while I'm doing this, but I just want to make a little stop to make sure that even if the hot glue wears off, it doesn't move backwards. So looking at the side preview, we have our rubber band, rubber band, rubber band, rubber band. So now that we have all these rubber bands, it's time for the crest de resistance, this bad boy right here. So I have a bottle cap here that I have from an old bottle of seasoning. Feel free to use, use a soda cap. You can have different type of actual holders. One person actually suggested something brilliant, which was to take the leftover egg carton from one of our projects and use that because we're using cardboard and it's really light. But I want this to look like our actual model in Tinkercad. So I'm gonna do this, but our other model was egg-shaped. So, you know, that is an option. Remember, we're tinkering together at home. So we're doing this with items we have at home. And so there you have it. We have our little catapult. Now, I have some coffee beans because I don't have any marshmallows to actually test this out. So, wish me luck. I'm gonna put a couple of coffee beans in the actual capsule. I'm gonna move this a little bit back. I'm gonna hold this, tilt this back. Oh, okay, okay, let me try again. Let me add a couple more. One, two, three, four coffee beans. I'm gonna hold this back and launch. Okay, sorry, this is fun. Let me do this one more time. One, two, three. <laughs> So we can actually do this with the spoon. This is a very long spoon. So instead of doing the bottle cap, we could have put the spoon actually on here and use this as a launch. This actually would have been a bit of more rigid launch. So that's always an option. Let me actually move this just as a tad. You guys are seeing all my Billy Hills materials. So there. So you can actually have this be more of a catapult, but let's, let's just take a quick stop. We were able to put this together within about 20, 25 minutes, and we're able to create an actual 3D model of what this looked like in another 30 minutes. So we could quickly guide our physical build with how we wanted this to actually look. That is what makes this so amazing. Is that you can use Tinkercad and especially the Making at Home collection in order to prototype what you want to build with all the pieces in this collection and then be able to take your Tinkercad model, go over to your workspace and be able to pull something off like this, this and knowing that you can use your Tinkercad model in order to work out all the kinks that you may encounter during the typical building process. Like how wide do my pieces need to be? What areas do I need to reinforce? And all of this can be the focus of your build and instead of just getting started. So you saw how easily, even without popsicle sticks, we were able to still use our Tinkercad model to know how did we're gonna create a replacement for a popsicle stick. Now, in actuality, this isn't a perfect replacement of an actual popsicle stick, but using our Tinkercad model, it allowed for us to be more creative. So I call that a win for tinkering together at the end of the day. 
One person asked, if I was gonna use a softer material such as cardboard, one thing I've noticed with my catapults is that it's a little bit difficult to get the bend I want because this piece keeps bending a little bit too much when I'm bending backwards, as you can see. Well, one way you can design around that is that instead of only having one piece of cardboard right here, you can actually use one of your spare pieces and actually do two pieces. Now that's a little difficult for me because I use hot glue in order to reinforce all my layers. However, if you weren't using hot glue, let's say you were taping, if you very gently use a pair of scissors or your X-Acto knife, you actually can undo it and then add that other layer. These are the iterations or improvements upon the build that makes engineering engineering. So I highly encourage you all to do that. So you won't hear any complaints from me in regards to that. Any other questions you guys may have? Okay, one person asked why coffee beans? So I had M&M peanuts, which was the original idea for this project, but then I thought about it. Do I wanna fling precious M&M peanuts at this time? No, I know if I fling these coffee beans, I can quickly wash them and then put them in my next morning. So it was more of a, which one was I willing to sacrifice in order to get the job done? And as far as I'm concerned, I was willing to sacrifice my coffee beans versus my M&M peanuts. So, you know, you know where my, my, my standards are. But I'm really happy with how this project turned out. If you have any questions for yours truly, feel free to, me to ask them in the Q&A section or on our social media. You can find us as at Bajika at M-B-A-D-I-K-A-A. -A. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. A rerun of this show will be on our YouTube channel. So you have that to look forward to if you wanted to repeat or share this project with anyone. But as always, this is our last Tinker Together session. Just wanted to tell you all, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. I mean, it's been a lot the past couple of weeks, and I just want you to know that we appreciate you coming on and actually watching and building and tinkering together with us. So I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay healthy. And from here, as well as from the Tinkercad team and my Bajika family and yours truly, I hope you continue to tinker together, whether it's with us on our social media or with your family and friends. I just hope you continue to do so. So thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time. And just as a proper send-off, let me go ahead and add some more coffee beans. Boom, 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 boom. And until next time, we're off. <laughs> Ciao, guys. <laughs> Thank you.